Welcome back everyone to another episode of Closer Bro. This is a very quick intro to what was a little bit of an error on the last bankroll challenge. The actual number is 4930. That is where our current bankroll sits at before today's episode. This is an episode that is none like any you've ever seen. The action is really crazy and the little bit of a sprinkle of something new is what I think in, in fairness is the best part of the episode. And again, two things guys, C2B poker at gmail.com. Send over your video submissions if you want to come to the World Series of Poker for absolutely free. We're free rolling somebody's stay, travel, and tournament event. And you guys can hang out with us if that means anything to you. But anyways, I got to get to the gym. I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy the episode. No, I have to go. go. All right. These are your final chip counts. Mariano, 67K tonight. I hope you all enjoyed it. All over 5,000 of you concurrent viewers. The VPIPs JT led the way with 64%. Nate right behind him with 46%. Sorry, buddy. What's up? This is really bad timing. We still have to make a bankroll challenge video. I mean, that's some of the worst news I think I've ever heard in my life, to yeah. be honest. I have an idea, though. Since you just lost a lot, why don't I play as well? Well, I would tell you that that's impossible. What if you played a session and I played a session? and I dedicated whatever I won to the bankroll challenge. Two hands are better than one. Two hands is two chances at glory. So you go to wherever you go, I'll go wherever I go. Could even be at the same casino, but not at the same table, and we grind. Probably not gonna win $20,000 playing two, three, but we do have a bankroll challenge to complete. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Editor, welcome. <laughs> We're gonna play some 35200 cap. We've been playing poker at home for a little while, editing Kiran for a while, right? So take it easy on me in the comments. Hope you guys enjoy. Hopefully, we uh we build this bankroll up to where it needs to be. A couple of things I have to note out immediately. We're gonna be playing 510 in today's session, as you guys heard. I mentioned in the last video that I wanted to be responsible with the bankroll challenge. And I'm going to be honest, I've thought about this. I've slept on it for about a week. I'm flipping it on its head. Yeah, it's a little hard to sit down at 2-3 after losing 20k in a couple, you know, the session before that I played. Uh, and two, for the, you know, within the confines of the bankroll challenge, I think five buy-ins for any game I'm playing minimum is a good idea. And my goal is to provide entertaining content at the end of the day that has good ROI for both of us here. And 2-3 just isn't that. It hasn't been hidden. All that to be said, we're starting off with me before we get over to Mike. In this very first hand of note, I should preface and be totally honest, I've already lost $800 in this session. In the very first hand of note, I flopped none of flush straw and wasn't able to get there. It was a bomb pot. Couldn't get my chips out fast enough or my recording device, I should say, but... Just for all intents and purposes, to be totally transparent, we're stuck $800 immediately in today's session, so just keep that in mind. Late position makes it $35 to go. I'm on the big blind with pocket eights, and I decided to just go all in for $700. These guys have been absolutely ridiculous in gambling with fucking any damn near two, so my goal is to just get these people to call off for whatever it is. Obviously, our opponent has a little less than me. He has 400 but after a bit of time, he decides to just tank, call it off. The board comes out Jack, Jack, King. Queen on the turn and seven on the river. Going to be hard for me to win this hand. But I do announce a pair. And my opponent shows ace nine. So, yeah. I'll take it. I'll win. And I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And that gets me a little closer to even on the session. You know, making a vlog, you really do learn about your play a lot. But you also learn about other people's play a lot. And uh, let me tell you, I'm from the East Coast, guys, and you West Coast people got some action out here. Let's try to take advantage, huh? So we're in the big blind. This is one of the first hands we play, like from sitting down, like almost immediately. Uh, we look down at King of Spades, three of clubs. We're not going to do much with this. If, it, if somebody opens, we're going to fold. But it's three limps and we check. So pretty cool. 
The flop comes jack of spades, seven of spades, four of spades. So that's pretty solid. We're going to check call pretty much everything, right? Maybe even check raise. I don't know. Probably check call, but nothing happens. It checks around and the turn comes the eight of spades. I'm going to bet out here. Um, I, you know, turn to flush. Uh, I got one caller out of the many, uh, many, many floaters and the river comes the nine of spades. So there are several things wrong here. First of all, you're going to see me put this guy all in right now. So this is problem number two. Problem number one, I think was betting too little on the turn, right? So if we're trying to fold out everything, gr granted, once we find out what this guy had, he wasn't going anywhere for any price ever. <laughs> uh, but we should be betting more here anyway. 10 into 25 isn't anything. You know, $25 isn't anything really at this stakes. So uh, he ends up kind of snap calling anyway. He thinks about it for maybe a second, but he calls. I show my king thinking I'm pretty good. And he shows 10, seven with the 10 of spades, the straight flush. I was like, wait a minute, king. And then uh, I realized the bad news. So we punt there and that's not good at all. Uh, I wrote down LMAO like I got sucked out on, but I definitely misplayed this hand. So on to the next. Okay, Mike, you don't have to feel bad. You punted in your first hand. I punted in my first hand, but we're looking up here. Things are going to be getting better. I can promise you that much. In this next hand of note, we are in the bomb pot. Every player has to put $25 in blind so we get to a flop. No limit variety. I don't like these, but ugh, it's a little easier to like when you flop two pair, baby. The big blind leads for $125. Easy spot for us to go ahead and flick in the raise. I make it $400. I don't love my sizing. I think with how many people are still left to act, let's make it a little bigger, but who cares? Small blind tanks for an eternity before deciding to fold. And that's kind of important because he had a pretty big stack and we didn't really want to tangle with him. And then the big blind decides to jam it all in for $500 to go. Easy call for us here. And the board runs out with the deuce of diamonds on the turn and an eight of hearts on the river. We end up scooping against ace nine. Once again, ace nine is not able to beat us. We're undefeated against that. Give me some good news, Mike. What a wonderful world it is, ain't it? Look at that. Pocket jiggities. Shout out to Brad frickin' Owen, huh? So I opened a 25 here. Uh, there's a limp, you know? So I'm trying to just uh, get some more money in. And we got four callers to this $25 open, including that limper right there. So that's... <laughs> Good. <laughs> Let's flop some greatness, please. Dealer would love to see it. The first card we see is a five. So that's good. The second card we see is a jack. So great. And then the next card we see is an ace. Even better. So I'm going to bet out 60, just over half. I'm, um, once they call, I'm going to jam any turn, any uh, uh, anything, right? So after a little bit of thinking, the person to my left, who's next to act, obviously, they jam for like 58 something like that and everybody ends up folding which is great the turn comes the six of spades don't love to see that and then the river is like a blank i show my jack knowing that i i, I needed to fade some spades and he actually had an ace as well and he had ace ten of spades so that would be wanted so that pocket jack sand man there's nothing you can do about it dog you know what i mean so hopefully you know you look down the very next hand at pocket jacks again <laughs> and you just, you know, all right, cool. Let's, let's just do the same thing. We opened a 25 and we're, we're really inside. We're kind of like, holy shit. can't believe we got pocket jacks again. Uh, the guy to our right calls and blind checks. So that's good. He's a, he's a big blind, big blind. Um, we flop a set again. So we're going to bet small, super duper small. Try to get him to call everything 50, 15 into 50, which is, you know, stupid small. So now we got, you know, 110 in there. I have probably like 78 or 79 or something like that behind. So I jam and he doesn't really think too long about it. He calls. So that's really cool. And this is a really like a crazy hand to report. You know, it's kind of just plays itself. The action players and the West Coast just be in action. -y. I show down my jacks kind of hoping that I'm okay. There was a queen that came out on the turn, so that was a little weird, but he never shows. We double up, and I'm really excited that we didn't get <laughs> sucked out on again, um, and we held. So we tip, and we move on. Let's go. Mike, you just proved it to us there. There is no right way to play pocket jacks, but luckily for us, on that second try, you were able to figure it out. Hopefully, I can use that as my catalyst here for my final hand of note. In this hand, 
I'm in the middle position with pocket sevens. A little bit of a tricky situation, as I mentioned earlier. When you're opening in this game, there's a bounty winner, meaning that everyone has to pay them $25 if they win two hands in a row. Kind of costly, got to be careful about that. And that's why everyone's raising on the larger side in a pretty small 510 game. I make it $60 to go. A button calls, and then the small blind player, who's that bounty winner, he decides to three bet to 330. Don't love this spot, but considering both of us are playing well over $1.5,000 deep, I decided to get a little frisky and make the call. Everything is working out. When the flop comes out, Jack 7 5 Rainbow. That is, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to work. That is about as good as it's ever going to get for my hand. Our opponent does, I mean, this is what dreams are made of. He just opened gems, $1,500 into a pot of like 700 bucks, 2x pot. Uh, thank you, sir. I do. The turn is a ten of spades, and the river comes out the nine of diamonds. He announces one pair, and I and ship it, ladies and gentlemen. Holy fuck shit! Just a few days ago, I was at the same freaking casino, down to my last two hundred dollars, and by some miracle, by the power vested from you lot, from you lovely people in the comment section, the lovely people that are supporting this channel, you guys made this possible. I swear, the energy that you guys are providing, I can see you guys pushing me on, wanting me to keep going forward. Let's go, man. That's madness, man. Let's go. Holy shit, Karan. That's insane, dude. Okay, send that run good over here. And let's see if we can make some magic happen with this uh, Jack 10 offhand here. So we raised, we raised a 15. This open to 15 is too small, I think. I need to be consistent with my 25 sizing, right? I get six callers. Oof. Six callers with Jack-10 offsuit, so let's really hope we flop well here, because we need to. And the flop does come <laughs> really in our favor. It comes King, Queen, Nine, Rainbow. So let's try to get as many callers as possible. I'm gonna bet 15. If they're calling 15, Mike, you can probably bet a little bit more, maybe 25. Who knows? But the guy to our left calls, which is great. And then the gentleman down there raises to, I believe, 90 or 100. He just grabbed a stack as much as his hands could hold. I jam here. You know, thinking back, if I wanted to get more value, maybe I call and the guy next to me calls and then I jam the turn, right? Maybe. So I jam, the guy to my left folds, and the other gentleman down there who had raised definitely calls, like snappity dappity calls. And um, he shows a set of nines, and I show my straight. I flop the straight, and we are good. <laughs> Was gonna film an outro, but then somebody wants to move on my spot, so bear with me. Okay, we're back at Kiran's place. I, mean, I think we, we played pretty solidly for a few hands, and like I think maybe the king three hand is a little questionable. Uh, we'll see what Kiran has to say about that one. So we're in for 300 and out for, I think it was like five even, or 512 or something like that. So adds it to the bankroll challenge, which is pretty cool. We'll see what Kiran does, and we'll throw it over to him now. There's very few times I feel like I've been genuinely I don't know if the word is ungrateful, but it's probably the best word to describe it. I've never been more unthankful for a really sizable win. Uh, we ran like as pure as possible. Uh, you guys will see the numbers here of how much we won. Mike ran really well. He won a little bit, almost doubled up his money. So like combined, the boys did great. And uh, obviously the problem is off the heels of a really rough session at the Hustler the time before, kind of rough if I'm being totally transparent to uh, like the mental capacity. It almost was a blessing in a sense though because even after doing so well and like winning at the gardens, I kind of just wasn't in the mood to play poker and I just kind of cut the session short. So, you know, I think I just got lucky. It didn't play all that great. I didn't do anything special. I just ran well and got it in good. And um, yeah, I was able to call it a day there. So all that to be said, the bankroll is looking really, really juicy. Uh, finally, I'll be able to, I think, play 510 comfortably, uh, 5 five ten even. And uh, yeah, we're gonna keep taking our shots here and hopefully knock out this bankroll challenge over the next five, three to five episodes. Uh, at the pace we're at, it feels like that's perfect. All that to be said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We should be playing on The Hustler on Thursday, which will be, I think, tomorrow. Outside of that, hope you guys have a lovely day. Make sure to send over your, ink, or your 
uh, submissions to the close to broke c2b poker at gmail.com if you want to come to the world series of poker and if not you guys can always play with me on the splash squads we're doing a bunch of really fun stuff there pretty much a weekly meetup and i play there every single day if you want to play with me so links at the top of the description for that otherwise i gotta get home finish up at the gym it's a really fun day love you guys all have a great day peace